Scientists discovering possible signs of life on Venus. A new study finding traces of gas in the planet's clouds may indicate that some form of life existed or may even exist there. Famed astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson joins us now to break it all down. We are honored to have you, sir. Um, uh, but great this to be back. is surprising to a lot of people. Yes, thank you, because Venus is a pretty hostile planet, right? It's as hostile as it gets. It's it's much hotter than a pizza oven, if you want to actually do the math on that. Um, so these molecules that were discovered, they're called biomarkers. So so until the day arrives where we have magic telescopes that can see to the surfaces of shrouded planets and watch for creatures crawling back and forth, until that day arrives, which may be never, we have to be satisfied with not finding life directly, but finding the, the signature of life, the biomarkers that betray the existence of life at anywhere else in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the world that you're studying. And so these molecules, it's, it's phosphine, which is phosphorus with three hydrogen atoms attached to it. That's a, known to be a product of life on Earth, life as we know it, that d metabolizes not in the presence of oxygen. So anaerobic life, it's called collectively. You have it in your, in your gut. It's in the gut of farm animals. It's in, so it's, it's a common phenomenon on Earth. And there's not, there aren't many ways, other ways we can think to make it other than by the natural of uh, causes of being alive. And so they found a layer in Venus's atmosphere that's not so high temperature, not so high pressure, and it's sort of just right. You can imagine like a Goldilocks zone in the atmosphere that could sustain uh, molecules of biology. How surprising was this to you and how big of a deal is it? Oh, com I'm completely surprised. <laughs> I'm delighted and surprised because it was so easy to just write off Venus as, nah, it's still an interesting planet. But if you want to look for life, let's, over, let's all look to Mars. So, but really, we, we should have known this earlier. Back in 1976, uh, Carl Sagan and Edwin Saltpeter got together and published a paper speculating on what life might be like thriving in the atmosphere of Jupiter. Now, the press ran with it and said, oh, we've discovered life on Jupiter. No, it was a, it was an, it was a scientific exercise to ask, is the energy supply, the chemistry, the convection, the, are there, the kinematics, the dynamics, can that all come together and create a life and sustain a life ecosystem that is outside of our expectations? And so it was an intriguing research paper, peer-reviewed and published. And so this is kind of in the spirit of that. Instead of looking to the scorching hot surface of Venus, we're looking in its atmosphere. Yeah. So, so what do we do from here? I mean, as you said, <laughs> we don't have the tools to dig deeper, but we could send something there to look, right, as we have on other planets. Is it worth that in your mind? Yeah, so 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 Venus is not very far away. In fact, among all planets, it gets the closest to us. So, uh, relative to other missions in the solar system, a, a Venus mission is relatively cheap. Uh, so, uh, so you pose the perfect question. So, once you have this tantalizing evidence of this molecule, a biomarker, now we are in a position to ask the next round of questions. What could possibly be causing it? How would it be sustained? How would you go into the atmosphere? Don't go too deep because you could vaporize your, your craft. You want to sort of skim into the atmosphere, possibly bring back samples to return. If they're microbes, you'd want to sort of capture them and bring them back to our labs. It's not realistic to send an orbiting lab to Venus, not at, at least at this stage of our um, uh, spacefaring prowess. Um, and by the way, just if I can back up for a moment, this was a collaboration. It was like telescopes in Chile and the UK, scientists in the United States. And um, it's, it's, it's quite the, the, the triumph, once again, of scientific, international scientific collaboration, which should be a model of how the rest of us behave in this world. And unfortunately, uh, I don't think we always live up to it. Well, we can look at the bright side and say it's like social distancing among scientists all around the world. <laughs> they're far apart, but, you know, they're going to collaborate. I'm, I'm going to look at it that way. 
Neil deGrasse Tyson, <laughs> thank you so much for coming on. My whole house was looking forward to this today. You know, thank you, my friend. Excellent. See you Excellent. next time. Uh, Connell. Delighted to help serve.